Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Veronique and in today's video about Power Automate, it's going to be very exciting. We're going to have a look at subflows, we're going to have a look at air handling, and I'm going to show you not one, not two, but three different scenarios with Excel that you probably never thought about. Let's do it. And before we start, let me show you the file we're going to work with. So on my desktop, I have an Excel file. I'm going to open it. And on the first row, we just have text and we're going to use that to manipulate and style the headers. And the first thing we're going to do in Power Automate Desktop is we're going to set the variable to have our file path. Now, this is not mandatory for this specific flow, but it's always good to be as dynamic as possible. So I'm going to select the file, shift on your keyboard, right click, and then we have copy as path. So I'm going to grab this. It's not copied into the clipboard. And then I'm going to go into variables, set variable and drag that into the canvas. I'm going to change the variable name and then I'm going to paste the file path. When you do this, make sure that you remove the double quotes, otherwise this is not going to work. And then click on save. Then we need to open Excel. So if I look for Excel, and then we have launch Excel. We're going to open our specific document, the file path. This is going to be our variable, and we're not going to change any of the other options. Click on save. And now we need to select our cell. So I'm going to reopen the file. And what we need to do is we need to select from A1 into H1. And there is a handy action that will help us to do this. So I'm just going to expand that a bit. And there's this action called get free first column row from Excel worksheet. So let's drag this in. And this is going to give us two variables, first free column and first free row. And now this is where we're going to select our cell. So I'm just going to do a quick search. And then under Excel, we have select cells in Excel worksheet. Our Excel instance is the only that we have a range of cell or a range of cell relative to the active cell. We're going to leave that as a range of cell. And so the start column would be column A. The start row would be one. And now this is where we're going to use the variables that we produce just the step above this one. So the end column is going to be the first three column minus one. Why do we put minus one? If we look at the Excel file, the first three column is going to be column I. We do not want this one. We want the one before. We want H. That's why we put the minus one. If we wanted column G, then we would put minus two. Now for the first three row, We'll do the same, minus one. And now we click on save. If we look at the Excel file, what we would do manually after that, so we would have our column selected, and then we would click on cell styles. We would choose a styling, and then we would go even further into the data, and we would apply some filters. So let's do the first bit going to go back into Power Automate Desktop. And this time, what we're going to do, we are going to use the recorder. So the recorder is at the top here, and it's the dot. And you don't see the word recorder because my window is minimized, kind of. But if I make it a little bit bigger, like this, you would see that it says recorder in here. So let's click on it. And we have this other window and it's opening where we're going to start recording the steps that we are going to do. Now, first, let's go back to where we should be, which is on the home tab. And we're going to press record. And you can see that when I start moving my mouse into the Excel file, we have a red border against the UI element. So we're going to click on cell styles. And what can happen in here is that because when I moved my mouse, the Excel was not really in focus. It was not really selected. So 
When I clicked on it, it didn't actually open the menu. So I'm going to click on it a second time. And you can see on the right that it did not add the steps again. So we can now choose uh, a style. So I'm going to take the blue one and we're also going to add bold. And at this point, let's say that we're just finished. We're going to test our script first. Click on done. And the steps from the recorder have been added to the flow. But as you can see, they've been added at the top. So we need to change that. So I'm just going to select them all and move that at the bottom. I can delete that. So I select it, just press delete on your keyboard. And now we have everything in order. So we're going to run the flow and it should normally be exactly like this. So I'm going to close the file, don't save, and I'm going to run the flow. All right, cool. So it works. So we're good to go for now. The next step we want to do is at this point, this is where we would be. We need to click on the data and then click on the filter icon. So we're going to use the recorder again. Put that on the side and we're going to click on record. We're going to click on the data and I'm going to click again. We'll see when we run the flow if that's necessary or not. And then finally, we're going to click on filter. Click done. Again, the steps have been added at the top. I'm going to delete that. And then we should be okay. So let's run that again. And we are good to go as well. Now, just for the sake of making that prettier, we're going to resize the columns and we're going to move the, um, the selection. We're going to get out of this selection. And there's an action that is called resize the columns. I'm going to put that here. Again, this is our Excel instance. The target is the columns. Selection range, we have single range or all available. For our case, we can choose all available. And then we're going to leave that to auto fit instead of a custom size. Click on save. And finally, we have a send key action. So we can actually get out of this selection. I'm going to put that at the bottom. So we're not going to choose the foreground window because we never know. We have an instance. We're sure that this is going to be targeted. The Windows instance will be our Excel instance. Insert special keys. We're going to do as if we were on um, doing things manually. So the arrow key, you can put up, down, right, whatever. We're just going to put down. And then the delete between the keystroke, it doesn't really matter. We can leave that. And then we click on save. So all done. Let's actually save our flow because we haven't done it so far. And let's run the flow one last time. And now, as you can see, we have our style, we have the filters and it also went into the column A2 out of the selection. So that's great. Everything's working great, isn't it? Cool. Now, let me show you something because we're using the UI elements. And by the way, if you don't know where are the UI elements, you can see here we have the variables. So that's why we can click um, to close it. And then underneath we have the UI elements. So the UI element for the cell styles, this is what it looks like. Okay, this is what we are clicking on. Now, what would happen if, going back home, and we change the size of the window? So now it looks different. 
So this would be one thing to think about. There's another thing that might be more obvious is what if there's no ribbon? So I'm going to close. Don't save. And I'm going to run the flow again to see what's going on. And as expected, we have an error, which is in here, when we click on the styled menu. And obviously that's because we don't see it. The ribbon is not visible. So we need to counter this. And to do this, we're gonna use the on error button. And there are different things that we can do in here. We can retry the action, but in our case, this is not going to help because the ribbon is still not going to be there. Or what we can do, if we click on new rule, we can set a variable or run a subflow. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a subflow and we're going to insert it in that step to run in case the ribbon is not visible. So let's click on cancel, go into subflows and new subflow. And when you create a subflow, the name should not contain any spaces. So you can put some underscore or put everything together, but no space. So I'm going to call it if Excel ribbon is not visible and click on save. And now we're going to think about what we would need to do if the ribbon is not visible. So we would basically have this. We would need to click on the home tab and then we would need to pin the ribbon, right? So let's just do this. Let's use the recorder again. Let's click on record. Click on the home tab. And I'm going to click again. Like I said before, uh, maybe you won't need that step because the window would be in focus. So we might just need to remove it. It's absolutely fine. And then I'm going to pause it because I need to move my window. I'm going to resize it. and then click on record again. I'm just going to remove them. And then we're going to click on the pin icon. Now what I can do at this stage is I can remove all those steps that I don't need. So I'm going to press the home tab and then I'm going to pin the button. And I'm also going to remove that because I don't need that. And I'm going to press done. Now those steps were the steps that were missing, meaning that we're not going to redo again, pressing the uh, cell styles button and choose a color and so on. We don't need to do that. Let's just remove that and then go back into the main flow. And I'm going to copy everything that's from this point until the last one. So shift on your keyboard and then select everything, right click. You can copy that. I'm going to go into the subflow, right click and just paste. I'm going to save my flow. And usually what happens when you have a subflow is that once the subflow finishes, it's going back into the main flow. But because we've just repeated all the steps in here, we don't need that to happen. So what we are going to do is we're going to stop the flow. And we're going to end the flow successfully because if there's any error, then we will know it before. Click on save. I'm going to save the flow again. And now one thing that's important is not to forget to go into the main flow, click on where the error occurred, double click on error, new rule, run the subflow and put your subflow in here. If you forget, you're still going to have the error. So. Once this is done, click on save. Now on my file, I'm going to remove the ribbon, close everything, and then I'm going to run everything. And as you can see, everything went well. If we look at Power Automate Desktop, you can see that we are on the subflow. So it did not find the ribbon first place. One thing I like to do, even though it didn't show in here, is that when you pin the ribbon, 
sometimes the flow is a little bit too fast or it might be too slow. So what I like to do is actually wait for a couple of seconds. I'm going to choose the wait action and I'm going to put that between pinning the ribbon and choosing the cell styles. And the duration is in seconds. So I'm going to put three seconds and click on save. And so far we've seen two different scenarios and that works great. But now there's a third one. Let's say we're going back to the home tab. We have the ribbon is visible and that's fine. We have the cell styles and that's fine as well. And by the way, if I just expand this, even though this is not the same image, basically UI element, it would work with that one as well. Now, what would happen if, let me put that off screen, I'm gonna expand even more. What would happen if we have this, where the cell styles button is actually not visible? Well, we're gonna have an error, so we need to create another subflow. So let's do it. Go back to Power to make this up. I'm just gonna reduce that for a moment. And subflow and new subflow. And this time I'm just gonna call it if Excel is maximized. If Excel is maximized, what we need to do is we need to click on this button in here and then choose our style and continue with the steps about the filters and so on. So again, let's choose the recorder. Click on record. Click on this button. And you can choose uh, the color, obviously the one we had before, so we can choose it again and that's fine. And then we can click on done. And again, we're just gonna take the steps from before. You can also do control C, control V if you want. And obviously we also need to stop the flow at the end. Remember we are in a subflow and we don't want the subflow to go back for that particular case into the main flow. And this time we need to go back to the subflow and we are going to put our new subflow. So if Excel is maximized into two different actions that we have here. So I'm going to scroll back up and we're going to put it in here on error. New rule, run a subflow, and also into the cell styles. So why are we doing this at two different steps in here? Well, the first one is that in here, we are already going into the cell styles. So we may be able to pin the ribbon and that's fine. So we won't have a scenario where Excel is going to be maximized like it is now and also that the ribbon is not present. So we're solving two issues by doing this. So let's save the flow and we're going to try again. Fingers crossed. And it looks like it worked. That's brilliant. So now you have it. When you have the Excel file, remember that when it's open, it can be in different sizes. When we use the UI elements, it needs to be kind of the same, but if it's not visible, the ribbon is not visible or the button, whatever we need to click on is not visible, then it's not going to work. So that's one way of doing it. We can create subflows and we insert those subflows into the error action. Also, if you add the steps like we've done here, so we took from the main flow that was working perfectly and we just use the recorder for a couple of steps and we copy the rest of the flow. Don't forget to stop the flow at the end. Otherwise, it's going to go back into the main flow and you may run into some errors.